Hey everybody. Um, well, on this video, I'm going to go over the heart. Okay. So I'm going to go over this jumbled heart. The first thing we're going to do is the 14 steps of the heart. How blood flows through the heart, to the lungs, back to the heart. Second step, electrical circuit. Okay. How electricity travels to the heart. The third step is going to be coronary circulation. How blood flows around the heart itself so it can provide the nutrients and pick up the waste. Okay. Let's get started. Let's start with the 14 steps of the heart. The first place that the heart is going to go to, the blood is going to go to, and the heart is going to be the right atrium. Okay. So the blood is going to go into the right atrium via three tributaries. First, you have the superior vena cava. The superior vena cava is going to drain the head, neck, and shoulders, and arms, and forearm, upper limbs. And then you have the inferior vena cava that's going to drain the abdomen and the lower appendages. Okay. And the third place, uh, the, the third tributary is going to be the coronary sinus, this blood vessel in the back, which is going to drain the deoxygenated, deoxygenated blood uh, from the heart itself uh, and then dump it into the right atrium and join the blood of the superior and inferior vena cava. Step two, it's going to be the tricuspid valve or right AV valve. That, right, that AV valve is going to prevent the backflow of blood from the ventricle to the atrium. Okay, then our third step here is gonna be our right ventricle. Okay. And that's gonna be the beginning of our pulmonary circuit. So the blood is gonna go from the right ventricle and it's gonna go up to our fourth step, which is on this half of the model, which is the pulmonary semilunar valve. Okay. So we gotta go to this half to find out where the pulmonary semilunar valve is. Our fifth state is the pulmonary trunk, which is right here. Then we have our sixth step, which are the pulmonary arteries here and here. There's two factors why this artery is blue and this vein is red. Pulmonary arteries always take blood away from the heart, so it has to be an artery. Okay? And the reason why it's blue is because the blood is full of carbon dioxide. Okay? And then we go to pulmonary capillaries, which are going to be in the lungs. Okay? Alveoli is the last destination of oxygen when you take in air. So the, so the pulmonary capillary is going to be surrounding the alveoli, picking up the oxygen from the alveoli and dumping off the carbon dioxide into the alveoli. Okay? So now the blood is going to come back via the pulmonary capillaries oxygenated into the pulmonary veins. Okay? So, that's, and so this is a vein because the blood flow is going to the heart and it's red because it just picked up oxygen from the alveoli. The red blood cells just picked up oxygen from the alveoli and the surrounding plasma in the blood. So that's why it's red. And in step nine will be uh, the left atrium. Okay. Step nine, left atrium. You can see these four black uh, holes in there. Those are from the pulmonary veins, the pair of pulmonary veins on either side. Okay. And that will mark the end of the pulmonary circuit. So we're going to go through step 10 now, which is the uh, left AV valve, left AV tube ventricular valve, or the bicuspid valve, or the mitral valve. Okay? So that's step 10. And then blood is going to go into the left ventricle. Okay, left ventricle. Step 11. And that's going to be the beginning of our systemic circuit. Okay? So we end here, pulmonary circuit, and we start here to the systemic circulation. So now blood's going to go from the left ventricle up to the aortic semilunar valve right there, aortic semilunar valve. And then the blood's going to go up the uh, ascending aorta, which is step uh, 13. And then the aortic arc, which is our step 14, which I like to call like uh, the Golden Ways interchange. It's just a convergence of different highways and turnpikes down here in South Florida. Uh, so here you have the uh, the blood either going up to the head, neck, and arms via these blood vessels here, these three, or the blood can continue down the descending aorta to the abdomen and in the lower limbs. So um, let's do the electrical circuit. SA node, sinoatrial node, okay, that's going to be called the pacemaker of the heart, mainly filled with cell bodies. So the cell bodies are going to have uh, axons that come from it. So that's going to be the next step, the second step, which is the uh, internodal pathway or internodal fibers. There will be a bunch of axons that will come down and connect here 
to the AV node, which is our third step. Okay. AV node. Okay. Atrial ventricular node. AV node. And the AV node is going to also be cell bodies. Okay. And the AV node uh, coordinates the contraction between the atrium and ventricle. Okay, then our fourth step here is going to be the bundle of His, which are going to be the um, axons of the cell bodies of the AV node. Bundle of His, which goes into left and right bundle branches. Left and right bundle branches. And then it goes to the Purkinje fibers, which are axon terminals, which release the neurotransmitter onto the myocardial cells of the ventricle to contract and pump blood to either the pulmonary circuit from the right ventricle or the systemic circuit from the left ventricle. So that's our electrical circuit. Now, our next step is going to be the coronary circuit. Our blood goes around the heart so it can provide the nutrients uh, to the heart cells so it can contract. So we're going to need our left and right coronary arteries here, left and right coronary artery. The left coronary artery is going to provide blood to the left side of the heart. The right coronary artery is going to provide blood to the right side of the heart. The right coronary, let me show you how the right coronary artery goes. You see the right coronary artery here. Okay. And the right coronary artery continues. I have to go back here a little bit. The right coronary artery is going to go here, right side, all the way around to the back. Right coronary artery. And then it's going to bend, uh, bend as soon as it starts going down, it's called a posterior descending artery. So the right coronary artery goes around the right side of the heart, and it, when it goes down, it's the posterior descending artery or the posterior interventricular artery. And then branching off the right coronary artery, you're going to have these two guys here, the marginal branches. Marginal branch, marginal branch. Come off the right coronary artery, right coronary artery ends at the posterior descending artery. So now we have oxygen rich blood on the right side of the heart front and back. Now the left side, we have a left coronary artery. The left coronary artery is short, but it has an extension so it can be able to reach around the heart on the left side. So the left coronary artery is going to bifurcate or divide into anterior descending artery or anterior interventricular artery and going around is going to be the circumflex artery which becomes the marginal branch. So it's a bunch of marginal branches that extend from these arteries. Another marginal branch over here. All right, so those are all marginal branches. And in the front here, you have a couple more marginal branches. Okay, so those are the arterial blood flow around the heart. The heart itself is going to drop off carbon dioxide, and it's going to um, drop off uh, waste. So that waste and carbon dioxide is going to be picked up by all these blue veins around the heart, all these blue veins around the heart, minus this one, they're all called cardiac veins, okay? So those cardiac veins are going to come together and dump the blood into the coronary sinus, which dumps the blood into the right atrium and joins the blood of the superior and inferior vena cava. So let's name uh, these cardiac veins. I have a couple ways to help you memorize it. Okay, so here, this is the great cardiac vein, which goes all the way around back to the coronary sinus. So the great cardiac vein is pretty much paired up with the anterior descending artery or anterior interventricular artery. Okay. Up here you have the anterior cardiac vein, and this is the small cardiac vein. So the way you can memorize it is GAS, GAS, or SAG. Great anterior and small cardiac veins. In the back, here, paired up with the posterior descending artery is the middle cardiac vein. So you can think of PM. Okay? So middle cardiac vein, and this one will be posterior cardiac vein. So you can think of PM here too with the veins. So posterior cardiac vein, middle cardiac vein. Posterior descending artery, middle cardiac vein. Marginal branch, posterior cardiac vein. PM with the artery and vein, PM artery and vein, and PM with the two veins. Middle cardiac vein, posterior cardiac vein, marginal branch, posterior cardiac vein, posterior descending artery, middle cardiac vein, posterior cardiac vein, middle cardiac vein. PM, PM, and PM. Gas PM. Tell me memorize those cardiac veins. 
and then the cardiac veins will eventually come together in the coronary sinus and dump into the right atrium. Sorry. Right atrium. If I scared you about that. Right atrium. So coronary sinus right there, that little hole. Opening to the coronary sinus. Okay, so now we have a bunch of other little, other little structures. We did the three major outlines. Here we have, this is called trabeculae carne. Looks like hamburger meat. Some webbing, trabeculae carne. Here we have the papillary muscles. Okay, papillary muscles. With little fingers, right, papillary muscles. And then attached to it is going to be the chordae tenone. That looks like, like the tar strings or parachute strings. Um, other things, we have the intraventricular septum. It's divided into two ventricles. Uh, we have the apex and the base up there. Apex base. We have the inner lining of the heart, which is called the endocardium, which is basically endothelial cells. We have the muscular layer of the heart, which is called the myocardium. The myocardium, all this. Myocardium, all this. All these cranberry looking color or maroon. This is going to be missing the epicardium, but here you can see the fat that's on top of the myocardium. And then on top of the fat, you have the epicardium. And in the pericardial cavity and the parietal pericardium outside of that. Also, here you're going to have the um, auricles. Okay, these little flasps, flasps that are on top of the atrium. It's the auricles. It's like ears. Mm -hmm. Auricles. Um, and in here, I think that's about it for that. But let me just tell you the last couple things here. We have uh, the fetal, fetal remnants. The fetal remnants here. This is called the uh, fossa ovalis. Okay. The fossa ovalis uh, was created after the baby was born because in the baby, the lungs are inoperable. So in the fetus, this is called a foramen ovalis. Okay. So the foramen ovalis allows the blood to go from atrium to atrium, completely bypassing the lungs. Okay? So the blood will go from the right atrium to the left atrium, then it can go down to the ventricle and then up to the systemic circuit. Another fetal remnant is going to be this guy here. This is called a ductus, or in the fetus, it's called ductus arteriosum, because it allows blood, if some blood is about to go to the lungs, instead of going to the lungs, um, it's going to go to this ductus arteriosum, which will take you directly to the aortic arc, totally bypassing the lungs. And then when the baby's born, this is called ligamentum arteriosum. Okay. So ductus arteriosum in the fetus, ligamentum arteriosum in the adult, foramen ovalis in the fetus, fossa ovalis in the adult. Okay, I think that's about it. We got everything uh, covered on the heart. Hey, God, I hope I didn't forget anything. If I'm missing anything, just let me know in the comment section. And I'll answer the questions for you. So that's basically it. That's the review of the heart. Take care. Have a good one. Bye.